Hey everybody, Nick here, and tonight we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance, and uh, it's going to be on this little guy. This is the uh, EC Knives Avispa. Although that said, this same uh, maintenance video could just as easily be for its little brother, the, uh, the, the Zangudo here. Both of them are very interesting little steel frame locks, and um, both of them go together and come apart in roughly the same way. Now, one thing to notice is that this guy is not centered. Um, out of the box, actually, it looks like the blade might be slightly warped, and maybe the centering's just awful, but look, it's favoring the show side, uh, which is not great, but it is something that we're going to have to work with here. So if we can get that centering a little bit better, that'd be great, but it's also worth noting that uh, we cannot get that centering any better on this little guy. I actually had a whole video talking about centering and how to fix it, using this guy as the example, and, uh, well, the end result of that video was, nope, <laughs> not common centered. So, we live, we learn. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. This is one of those nights where I kind of, I'm sure we've all had these feelings where you're just like, you, you, you're out of brain. You got nothing else you can do with yourself. So what I'm going to do here is take apart a knife um, and see if that, you know, bring, brings me a little bit of joy, a little bit of peace. Not that I'm particularly unpeaceful. So I'm going to start off here just by popping loose each one of these top screws here. And I've got a little mat that's got little... Um, pockets here to organize however many screws come out of this guy. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, I only need to take out these four, five, I guess, one, two, three, four, and then five screws here. I don't need to do the f on the other side as well because that gets to be a whole bunch of screws. Already, this knife is pretty screwy for lack of a better term. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't need to invite any more pain than I've already got. Uh, we can see little hints on here, or at least I sure can. Maybe you can't. Here we go. See little hints of blue Loctite thread locker on there, which is fine. But uh, just means we're going to want to use some on the way out. But that's okay. I always do anyways. Let's go ahead and pop the uh, pivot out of here. And I've just moved from using a T6 pivot to uh, this is a T10 which I have correctly guessed is the proper size. It's actually become rather a uh, superpower of mine, uh, at least with Torx bits. Um, you know, I can look at anything just on the, the on the fly and realize, holy crap, that's a T6, T10. It doesn't come off very often, but at work, it's blown a couple of people away. Or I can not only identify a Torx screw because they, you know, already know it. Uh, they, none of them know what a Torx is anyways, but also that I can, you know, hey, that's T10, so I can get the right size first go, because I do it all the time here. Hard fought skill, though. So what we can see here is the knife. I'm just bragging. Um, The knife has come apart here, and I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's a frame lock over here. Got the uh, inner liner here, and that is something that's actually worth pointing out, is that this does have an inner steel liner. Uh, which, you know, just looking at it, it looks like it could have just been the half G10 thing, but no, they used the full-on liner here. And then on this side, you've got the uh, phosphor bronze, which is on here. So let's go ahead and pop these guys out. One other thing I'll note is that this does have these little tiny uh, Teflon or plastic washer inserts on those, and those were facing the blade. I don't actually have a good idea, a good sense of why those are used. I feel like maybe I should as a prominent jackass, but I, I don't. Um, in fact, if any of you guys are watching this and uh, have a sense of why that would be the case, I, I've, my guess has always been that it's a spacer, that they just needed a little tiny bit more thickness on those washers, so they threw those in there rather than ultra thin. Or maybe it's just to, 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 to run better when it's not lubricated. Whatever it is, I appreciate it. One other thing I want to take a look at here, okay, yeah, it's just it's a D-shaped pivot. That's fine. So just keep that in mind. But, uh, and there went my stop pin. That's fine. Lots and lots of things that are fine here. Life on the whole is fine. I mean, plus or minus. I mean, and I'm not talking about life as, you know, the existence of everything. Like, I'm that, that this is not the final conclusion of, you know, do we destroy life as we know it? I mean, the, the, the answer to that is no, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, you know, I'm just talking about my particular life, which seems to be doing pretty good. Busy. Oh, busy. Always uncertainty ahead of life. It's something I've had to sort of learn to cope with. I, mean, I think everybody does. But, you know, these days with the uh, climate being as it is, scientific work is not necessarily well-valued, and so job security and scientific work is not necessarily a thing. 
But, uh, you know, a man can dream and hope for future, for job security in the long term. In many ways, that is one thing I envy. Well, I envy many things of a skilled tradesperson. But, uh, you know, it's never the case that we're not going to need a plumber. <laughs> but, uh, you know, political stances don't affect plumbing. Anyways, I'm just ranting here. Oh, good God. Okay. So check this out. I just realized this. The uh, stop pin is differentially sized. Uh, on one side, it is much thicker than the other. My bet is that this is actually, that the thicker side is going into the, uh, the, the side with the G10. So it can go through both the, uh, well, no, this is plastic. It's like plastic. Um, but either way, so it can go through both sides. We'll put it back together that way and see if it fails. And then I am going to clean off these washers here, and I'll just go ahead and use a fresh little wipe. I'm completely ranting here, guys. It's been a long day. It's uh, a little, almost 9 p.m. Been up for a long time. Been busy as heck, but that's okay. All right, and that went flying off, but that's okay. Sorry about the heating. The uh, Michigan winters have started to set back in. It's 40-some-odd degrees today, which is, with the humidity and the wind, a little chillier. I know that people right now sitting in Montana on the wood-fired stoves and whatnot are laughing the, like crazy at me for being concerned about that, but... Alas, we only have our own experience. All right, so moving along. What the heck am I on about tonight, guys? It's been a long night. Um, anyways, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is use some um, frog lube. I have recently... God, I'm ranting. Um, I recently heard that uh, some folks did some testing and found that frog lube was basically coconut oil uh, with a couple of uh, fragrances basically added in there. And that wouldn't surprise me terribly. Um, given coconut oil and given frog lube, I think that'd be fine. But look, the simple fact is that for knives, as long as you're not using it for lubrication, as long as you're using it for rust protection, I think it works fine, coconut oil or not. Same thing with, uh, that's another common criticism that people have, I'm just oiling this part here so it just doesn't get all uh, rusty and whatnot. That's another common criticism people have of the, uh, the nano oil. Um, product that I tend to use for uh, lubrication. People say, well, Nick, it's just mineral oil. Like, well, okay, sure, it may well be. The fact is, it's mineral oil that works better than most mineral oil for lubrication, so I'm going to use it. I suppose I'm a pragmatist in that way. Anyways, there are lots of good options, though. Let's go on ahead, and uh, speaking of the nano oil, let's go ahead and use some of that nano oil to uh, pop this guy back into place moment I'm using my uh, quote-unquote fancy mineral oil in a pen applicator, which allows me to apply a little less of it. And I'll go ahead and apply some to this pivot here as well. There we go. I use this to apply less of it than I stab the freaking scale for three hours. To over-apply it, I'm going to put a little dot in here that should get between this and the little teflon -y sheet here. Come on now. There we go, and that will compress with the blade. All righty, so there's that. Um, oh, I should probably lubricate the detent ball path, although it's not, this is not a false shoddy sort of knife. This is D2 steel, though. Uh, not that that actually has any bearing on what I've just been saying, but it is. It's a simple fact. But uh, this D2 steel has actually um, not been taken care of super well because um, it uh, spent a few months over with uh, Frankie and Bird at the uh, Birdshot IV channel. They, uh, they went offline for a little while, just due to life catching up with them for a bit. And uh, this was there, and it wasn't a big problem or anything. I had plenty of knives to review. But um, so, you know, they weren't getting really a chance to play with them much. And then um, when they came home from them... It just sat in a uh, Pelican case for a little while. Probably should uh, put the stop in back in here. Just take it aloud. Um, but they just hung out in the Pelican case for a little while. And so this is a situation in which one could very easily expect a steel like D2 to rust up. But it didn't. So that was nice. All right. Next step is going to be to get everything popped together here. 
And a part of that process is disengaging the lock bar. Just, you know, and you saw me do that. Come on, there we go. All right, um, so that way everything's snapped into place. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start off by putting in the pivot. I'm going to use some Loctite here, and this is the blue stuff, and I'm using a uh, stick of it, which I like a fair amount. Not one of those things that you need to run out and buy immediately. Well, if you do, go to my knife disassembly tools video, which has a link to an Amazon store where everything you buy will support the channel. Well, don't do that. That's fine by me, too. I am well supported, so I'm not exactly hurting. If you can get a better deal on it at your local store, actually, you should support your local store. Local stores kind of trump jackasses, in my personal opinion. You can always find another jackass on YouTube. Can't always find another local hardware store. Anyways, it's beside the point here. So right now, the centering's good to go, but we're going to watch that change. Let's go ahead and put in the next one of these screws here. Maybe overdid it slightly there. All right, beautiful. Pop that in there. If this guy goes back together perfectly centered the first time, given the heck its little brother gave me, I'm going to be... Be a happy man. Feel like I've uh, really accomplished something today. Which is kind of unreasonable because I have accomplished some things today. Alrighty, so I'm just continuing the Loctite here. There's not all that much of terrible interest. I'm just putting these screws in it, you know, rough hand tightness. I'm not really trying to crank them down or anything. I just want them to be basically in position. Now I'm going to test everything. It is very slightly favoring the show side. The action is very smooth. There is no blade play whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these guys down the rest of the way here. That's good. That's good. You're good. You're good. Deploys nice. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, Centering-wise, yeah, we're still a little bit favoring show. Like I said, I'm not entirely convinced that the blade itself isn't slightly warped, uh, which is not a beautiful thing, but it is a thing. Um, But yeah, anyways, there you go. I um, hope this has been interesting to you. That was a lot easier than I expected it to be on that end of things. But you didn't mind my uh, my ramblings and rantings here about life in general. And that you mostly have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now, everybody.